Call me Squaw. You're a dirty Apache Squaw. I'm gonna kill you. Your people did that. Raiding, thieving, killing. Look out there! Oh, oh, oh. to your beat, squaw. Put that down. I gotta get me one of them. Just one Apache. I'll take that, miss. Can you hear me, Tom? Give me that knife. You're quite a fireball, aren't you? I'll be back. Don't forget that. One of these days we'll run you and that, that book-reading brother of yours off your ranch and onto the reservation where you belong. Well, you'd better bring a lot of your white brothers with you. All right, you two. One performance a day is all the customers are entitled to. You better go home now, miss. You better stay out of town for a while, Ann. Mind your own business, Macy. Don't say anything to Armin about this. Do you understand? Anything you say. Now, go about your business now, folks. No stranger's gonna push us around. Tom should have killed the breed. We gotta stop that Apache raid. Who are you to be giving us orders anyway, mister? I'll show you my credentials some other time. Right now, get moving. All right, Ed. Come on. Move along. That's all today, folks. Let's go home now. The half-breed come at me first. Yeah. A man can take so much and no more. You see your friends getting picked off every day by them Apaches. She didn't exactly look like an Apache warrior to me. Thing, Sheriff. We gotta have more help on this thing, then. See, the Apache's got some more of our boys. Let's put them on a reservation, they make an armed fort of it. They'll wipe us all out if we don't do something about it. The government was sending some help down from Tucson. Our help come this morning. A man with the Sheriff. One man? That the help they sent us? We need an army and they send one fast-talking politician. You won't be able to talk us out of those corpses in there. Could be we might have to look after this ourselves. We fought to get this country. I reckon we can fight to keep it. Not much we can do here, Sheriff. Poor old Matt Pierce. 
His missus will carry on something awful. Just one more Apache killing, we're gonna have some real trouble here. Men are already talking up a raid on the reservation. Nothing I can do about it. Fact is, I see a thing like this, I'm not sure I want to. I do to remind you that the Indian wars are over, Sheriff. Maybe for you, mister, but not for me. Matt Pierce was a particular good friend of mine. I think I'll clean my rifle. Might be needing it for something soon. I can't blame Ben. It's not exactly my idea of living in peace with the Indians, either. Well, it looks like I'm bucking everybody in town, including the sheriff. Mr. Moffat, we ask the government to send us military help, soldiers and artillery. Instead, they sent you, one expert on Indian affairs. Well, you bring the army down here now, and the Apaches would take it as a declaration of war. They'd be on the warpath before the soldiers made camp. They're on the warpath anyhow. Seven killings in three months. I don't know how many holdups. Cattle stealing whenever they take a notion. And they're getting bolder all the time. Anybody actually see the Apaches pull off one of these jobs? They don't leave witnesses. But is them all right? Plenty of Apaches signed. Running off the horses, moccasin print, bow and arrow killing. Uh, it could be somebody trying to make it look like Indian work. It's happened before, you know. No, it's got to be the Apaches. They watch every road. They know who's coming and going every hour. Hey, Sheriff! Wait a minute. Hello, Mooney. Sheriff, I'm going to get me drunk. <laughs> Looks like you got a pretty good start, old timer. <laughs> you gonna spend the grocery money again, Dick? You remember what happened last time? Oh, no, I got my own drinking money this time. That's what I want to see you, Pop. Here. Who, who pushed me? Yeah, look, here. I want you to kick off for me to go on home time. Two thousand dollars. Where'd you get this kind of money, Dick? <laughs> Shh, that's a secret. The missus will tang me good if I say. But there's a lot more where that came from. Old Mooney threw being broke. You know what? I can buy all the drinks in town and still have enough money left to buy headache powders in the morning. <laughs> you better lay in a good supply, you're gonna need it. Dick, maybe you better tell us where you got all this cash. Can't, I promise the missus. Well, thanks, Sheriff, I gotta get going. I gotta be drunk by sundown. Take care, Dick. It wasn't Dick Mooney, if that's what you're thinking. This old lady don't let him out of the house more than once every six months. I like this men hanging around out there. It's the makings of a mob. Feeling's running pretty high. They've got to be made to understand that this is more than a local problem. They live here. It's their relatives and friends that are being killed by the Apaches. If a few killings here spark an Indian war, the flames will reach out to every town and reservation in the territory. Whatever you're planning to do, do it fast. Situation's getting ugly. You saw how it was with Tom Chandler and that half-breed girl. They don't think that, that girl had anything to do with it. Dan LeBeau and a brother a half Apache. And mighty friendly with the Apache reservation. Well, that's not exactly proof of complicity, is it, Sheriff? And try this. The stage was held up four miles from the LeBeau ranch. The next nearest place is 11 miles away. Well, who lives there? That's the Apache Reservation. Hmm, well, I might drop by and see the bows at that. They're a tricky pair. You better watch them. Shooting, Ann. Your brother has the Apache's iron instinct with this weapon. Oops. 
set, Anne. What is it? The stagecoach was robbed this morning. Matt Pierce and a passenger were murdered. They're blaming the Apaches. I suppose that qualifies the half-breeds as suspects. One of the gentle townspeople called you a bloodthirsty savage. I know the pattern well enough. Nobody said anything. The line. Who was it? Milton's Paradise Lost. When you left the house this morning, you said you were going to work on the fences. Instead, you play with bows and arrows and read Milton. What happens when you give a college education to a half-breed? Don't use that word. Will it change things if I don't? Will it help us find our place in the world? Let's go back to the city, Anne. At least we had a certain amount of oblivion there. I don't want oblivion. I want to belong somewhere, be a part of something. There's no room for us here. We'll make room. The eternal optimists, aren't you? To our white brothers, we're less than the cattle that graze their fields. To our red relatives, we're outcasts. Yet our mother's father is chief of all the Apaches. What do you mean? Maybe it's time again to live by the Apache code. The white man has done nothing for us. Somebody got careless, huh? We'll do more than that if you don't send for the army. Are you speaking for the rest of these men? Is he? I reckon so. All right, now listen carefully. If and when I can't handle this myself, I'll know what to do about it. They ain't gonna kill any more of us without paying for it. We'll ride against the Apaches ourselves. There's a law that's called inciting to riot. Now the next man I hear talking like that's gonna get locked up. I'm one man who says what he likes, when he likes. He's all mouth, the government man. Any more of you self-appointed vigilantes need convincing? It seems to me that some of you folks are a little too anxious to hang this onto the Indians. Might even be that some of you are trying to cover your own tracks that way. There's one place in New Mexico even the sheriff was lining his pockets at the expense of a few bedeviled Indians. Tell him to go home now, Sheriff, and stay there. Thing. Yeah, I learned a couple of new ones I had to play for you. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Glad to see you, Carol. How things at the department? Never mind the department. How are things here? Oh, this is a tough one. Been here three weeks. Getting nowhere. They've been going at this for about a year now. Stealing, murdering, no witnesses. Anybody get in their way, they kill them. Let me show you something. Found this by the stagecoach this morning. Uh, that's Apache, all right. Yeah. They travel fast and far. Strike like lightning. 
always seem to know who, what, and where to raid. Well, a small band with the right connections could be doing all this. I've been looking for those connections. <coughs> Checked out a lot of them, even the sheriff. No luck. He sick me on the half breeds. The Lebeau's. Yeah, they're in a good spot. At contacts in town, they're close to the reservation. And Chief White Star has been visiting over there. Chief White Star? Is Strongbow dead? I was kind of figuring on him for some help. He's old. White Star is running things now. What do you suppose that White Star is seeing the Lebeau's? Well, folks say that he sort of has a yen for the Lebeau girl. What do you see? Looks like we got some company up there. No, hold it. Let on, we know they're up there. Just keep on talking, huh? You don't mind if I uh, take a little cover, do you? Well, look, if they wanted to pick us off, they'd have done it before now. Well, but uh, let's not give them a chance to change their mind, huh? Come on, let's get them. No, oh, they get the edge in this. It's easy to shoot down and up when they're up. We get back to the Lebeau's. You been giving them some of your time? Uh, three days and three nights. I uh, saw nothing out of the way, so I quit. Look, I can't keep my mind off of whoever's up there. All right, all right, we get out of here. Come on, we'll move slow. I uh, think I'm going to ride on down to the Lebeau place. Don't let that gal's beauty blind you. Yeah, she sure is a pretty one, isn't she? So is a diamondback rattler. You watch your step, mister, you hear? Don't worry about it, pal. I, uh, I want you to ride to the reservation. Ask Chief Whitestar to meet us here, alone, tonight. Here? You want spectators? That's the idea. Might draw them out, and we can get a look at them. Yeah. You might change their mind, decide to do a little uh, shooting instead of just looking. <laughs> well, in that case, I'll uh, see that you get an honorable mention in the uh, congressional record, posthumously. First a knife, now a gun. You're pretty versatile, aren't you? And I know how to use them. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But you don't want to kill a man without knowing what name to put in his tombstone, do you? My name's Moffat. You can call me Rex. I'm giving you ten seconds. I mean it. <laughs> ah, so bad. You lost it? Are you going? No. I want to talk to you. These uh, mountain streams are pretty cold. You better get out of there. All right, go get your clothes on. I'll turn around. Well, turn around then. This isn't going to be easy, you know. I uh, suppose you're tired of being told that you're really something to look at. Sorry I had to uh, interrupt your swimming like that.
I look like you're having quite a bit of fun. You look like you're having a lot. It's a thanks I get for being a gentleman. Let me up. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Let me up! She can't seem to be able to trust you. Someone sent you around to try the half-breed girl. Is that why you're here? How can you be so bitter and so pretty at the same time? <clears throat> say what you came to say and go. That stagecoach. It was held up about four miles west of here. What of it? Your house is quite a meeting place for some of the folks from the reservation. I see. Blame the Apaches, and if they're not around, blame the half-breeds. No, I'm not blaming anybody. Just want some information. I'm no informer. There's a full-scale Indian war shaping up. If you can help... We owe the white man nothing. We owe the Apaches nothing. We belong to neither. My brother went to college in St. Louis. He graduated from law with top honors. Then he opened an office. He could get no white clients because his mother was Apache. The Indians kept away because he was the son of a white father. We moved here to save his sanity. There's not a thinking man that's proud of what's happened to your brother and others like him. There's nothing we can do about that now. We can learn from our past mistakes, though, just as you can learn from yours. What was my mistake? Being born? You're trying to fight what you're up against with bitterness and hatred. Can't say as I blame you. You probably got good reason, but... Uh, they're the wrong kind of weapons to use, Anne. They're the only weapons I know. That's too bad. Was your brother at home today, say, uh, during about the time the stagecoach was held up? That's what you really came to ask, isn't it? You haven't answered my question. My brother was home when I left for town this morning, and he was home when I got back. Where is he now? Out fixing a fence. Are you sure of that? It's amazing how much I've learned to hate you in so short a time. Yeah? I have a feeling that I'm going to grow on you. Susanna, don't you cry for me? Oh, oh, please sing. Oh, oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me? Oh, oh, eh, eh. Dick Mooney, the best favor I could do you is lock you up for the night. <laughs> the old lady would tear your jail apart timber by timber if you do. If you don't sober up before you get home, she'll do the same for you. Got my money? Hmm? <laughs> the old lady would be so busy counting this stuff she won't even know I'm around. I still think you should have put that money in the bank. Thanks, got all it needs already. <laughs> all right, old timer, take care of yourself. Yeah.
I say we make up a party and ride on the reservation. The time's come to do something, boys. But they got us outnumbered. We can hit him just before dawn. Catch him by surprise. We need more men to have a fighting chance. Tom? You used to live over in Paiute. You think you could ride down there and bring some men back with you? I can get 50 men, maybe more. Good. Better leave at night. We wouldn't want them to spot you. I'll bring some gunpowder back from there, all right. We're going on a little snake hunt tomorrow night, Sheriff. I lost a mighty good friend of them snakes this time. I just might go along with you. Well, my heart's not in my music tonight. Yeah, I noticed it sounded a little worse than usual. You think that was possible? You think they're still up there? Uh-huh. Chief White Star, I'm glad you could come. I bring greetings from my grandfather, Chief Strongbow. He remembers you well. And I him. My friend tells me that he is ill. I'm very sorry to hear that. He grows old. There's war in the air, White Star. We must stop it. There is the smell of blood. Some of my people are afraid. Others are not. There are Apaches who still know how to fight. And die. You don't sound like a man in search of peace. The white man's peace is a bitter one. It means little. But I come at the command of my grandfather. He tells me I must listen. At each scene of violence, the mark of the Apache has been found close by. It is not the work of our tribe. It's the work of outlaws. But some of them are Apaches. You are sure of this? I saw them this afternoon. At least two of them were Apaches, possibly three. If they're of my grandfather's tribe, they will be found and punished. No, that will be turned over to me. I must show my people that this is the work of only a few outlaws and not of your whole tribe. That is all. One more favor, please. A small one. Stay here with my friend for a few minutes. I'll be right back. You going it alone? Yeah. You distract him. Keep talking with White Star. Chief, looks like you got a little treat in store for you. Draw that knife. You got some talking to do. Convince your boys are mixed up in this now? This man is not of my tribe. I do not know him. What? You mean to tell me you don't know this fella? And I suppose you didn't send him up here to spy on us either. I must go now.
I lost him. It's too dark. I made sure this one wouldn't tell us anything. Yeah, but he is uh, not a total loss, Rex. Mask and all. One of the boys we've been looking for. Yeah, much rather had him alive and talking, though. Yeah, surprising how much he's telling us even the way he is. He's Littlebrook, Reservation Apache. Pretty good friend of the Bulls. I sparred him there three or four times. The guy's told us quite a bit that, hasn't he? That's not all. Littlebrook tells us that White Star's a liar. White Star see him? <laughs> he left in a hurry. After telling me that he didn't know Littlebrook from Adam. But you just said that Littlebrook uh, was a Reservation Apache. That's it. White Star lied. I even saw Littlebrook and White Star leaving the Lebeau's together. I'm going down to the Lebeau's. Maybe I can get him to talk. Mark, that's a tough one, Rex. Let me go along with you. Now, you find yourself a nice, quiet spot and pray. You think he'd mind if I sort of oiled up my gun in the meantime? Where were you this afternoon? I did a little work on the fence. I looked in the barn. You didn't take any tools with you. Let's say I surveyed the work that I'm going to do someday. You came back with Macy. I saw you. Where'd you meet him? You sound more like my mother than my sister. I wish you'd been here when I talked to Mr. Moffat. Spare me the white man's words of wisdom. But it appear that he made quite an impression on you. He got me thinking. About where I was this afternoon? Macy. Ha! My white friend and neighbor. Come in. Just thought I'd drop by. So polite. And here I thought you'd come courting Ann. <laughs> Stop that, Armin. You'll have to move quickly, Macy. You have a new and formidable competitor. Mr. Rex Moffat, no less. I'm going out. Who does she think she is? She's an Apache chief's sister. That's who she is. <laughs> Apache chief? Who, you? But for a foolish woman who married a Frenchman by the name of Lebeau. And if my old man had been born king as I am, why, that's what I'd be. King Macy. Got a drink, Lebeau? Over there. Know what you are, Lebeau? A mongrel. That bottle courage is taking effect, isn't it? Making yourself out to be better than me. Better than everybody. Go home, Macy, before I kill you. I came over to give you a warning. Tom Chandler's riding to Paiute tonight. He's bringing back 50, 75 men. Then they're riding on the reservation. I don't live on the reservation. They'll come here first. You're Apache as far as they're concerned. You know what, Lavo? I might even ride with them. Won't that be something? Me shooting up your place. You better go, Macy. And that sister of yours. She ought to be glad I treat her like a white woman. I'm your friend, Lebeau. Get out of my house. Friend. About that fight in town, Ann. I wanted to help you. But I couldn't. People began wondering if I took your side. You know how it is. I know. What fight, Macy? 
Tom Chandler and Ann. They went at each other with knives. Shut up. No, go on, Macy. I, I want to hear it. He called her Dirty Squaw, and she went for him. It was something to see. He's drunk. It was nothing. It's getting late. I better go. Night, LeBeau. Night, Ann. Spectacle in the marketplace. Please. Forget it. Forget it? Just like that. I'm going in, Ann. It's late. I think I'll stay out here a while. It's so peaceful and quiet. That's the difference between us, sister. You can still find beauty and quiet. To me, the beauty is unreal. The quiet is Tom Chandler's voice calling you a dirty squaw. You left your arsenal in the house. What do you want here? Maybe it's just to find you out here alone. Sounds pretty anyway. Why did you come? I came here to tell you that we're 36 hours away from an Indian white man massacre. I know. Sorry about this afternoon. I do want to help. Well, I'm mighty glad to hear that, Ann. I, uh, I think that one of the outlaws was wounded in a gunfight today. Probably a head wound. You, uh, seen anybody around with a bandage in his head? I grazed him, I think. No, not that I can remember. You, uh, know a man called Littlebrook? Yes, he comes here often. He was killed tonight. Ki we know that he was one of the outlaws, too. Can't believe it. It's true. Chief White Star comes here, too, doesn't he? You don't think White Star would... Why do they come here? It's important that I know. They're Armand's friends. They come here and talk. You never heard him say anything that might uh, tie him in with all this? When you say them, you're including Armand, aren't you? Well, I'd be happy not to include him as soon as I can. Do you think Armand would murder for money? I don't know. There's been a murder for money today. Two of them. Can you account for your brother's whereabouts all day? Yes. He was home. He never left the ranch. Oh, that's good enough for me. I, uh, I'd appreciate it if you kind of kept your eyes open for me. All right. Thanks. He sure was right. Who? The fellow that told me that just looking at you would blind me. Don't go yet, Ann. I'd better go. to kiss you the first time I saw you. When I was going to stab you with a knife? Uh-huh. You're very exciting when you get mad. But I'm not mad now. You're still very exciting. Is that all? No. Of course not.
the moment I forgot the world that stands between us. It's only there because you put it there, Anne. Squall woman! Go into the house! He's right! I'm an Apache, please go! I'm not gonna have him talking to you like that! I had a foolish moment, please go! You sure you want it that way, Ann? That is the only way! I couldn't sleep either. This kiss would not let you sleep. It is still on your lips. Other things are bothering me, Armand. Seen in the marketplace, in a moonlight rendezvous. I shall not forget this day. Rex told me he killed one of the outlaws today. It was your friend, Littlebrook. Little broken outlaw? Ridiculous. He knows about him spending a lot of time here with you and the others. I have nothing to hide. He wanted to know if you were home all day. I told him you were. It wasn't quite true, was it? You were gone most of the morning. And I was away all afternoon. How do you know where I was? Don't tease about this, Armin. It's too important. I'll go to sleep. What is it? There's a wall between us. I can't climb over it and I can't break it down. It's not worth the effort. Let the wall stand. Good night, Anne. Why are you the one that has to ride tonight? I know the folks in Paiute. They'll come back with me. Ben knows them as well as you do? He asked me to go. Look, Tom, there are men who are followers and those who are leaders. I love you, but you're a follower. You shout and rave and storm because somebody else tells you to. You want the Apaches to run all over us? Get a baby in there. I want to try to work it out some other way. Without men going out to kill each other. I've got to do it. I wish you didn't have to ride by the reservation. The Redskins will be asleep by now. Chef. I don't think they'd hear me. That error in Tom Chandler's back last night's got him thinking just one thing, Apaches. But there's six or seven hundred men on that reservation who can fight. It'd be suicide. We fought against them kind of odds before. By the authority vested in me by the federal government, I'm telling you to break up that mob outside, Sheriff. As sheriff, I have to recognize your authority. As a plain citizen, I'll take my chances with the rest of them. Tonight, Ben, we 
We'll pay the Apaches a surprise call. It won't be a surprise. They'll be waiting for you. You gonna warn them? That's right. But there's another way. And if you give me a chance, we can work it out. Don't give us no course but to listen. Can you give me ten men who are willing to fight, maybe to die, to bring this thing to a head? We can get the men. What then? Have them here in your office at three o'clock. Will you go out there and break it up, Chef? I'll see what I can do. By the way, till I put that badge on again, and I'm not saying I will, it's plain mister. Not Sheriff. Sure. I heard you go out last night after I went to bed. I slipped out for a few minutes. Is that in case anyone asks? I suppose I owe that remark to Mr. Moffat's influence. I gotta talk to you. Hello. Go into the house. I'm staying here. I ain't got but a minute. Uh, what is it? You're having company. The government man is riding this way. So? The town's gone crazy. Tom Chandler got it last night with an arrow in the back. And here I thought archery was a lost start. <laughs> People are remembering that Ann said she was going to kill him. They think she did it? A woman kill a man with a bow and arrow? No, but they think her brother might have. One of his Apache friends, like Chief White Star. I really don't know why you came to tell me this, Macy. I was home snug in my little bed all night. Wasn't I, Ann? Yeah. Just thought you might like to know. Just being friendly. When did Macy hurt his head, Armand? Took a fall off his horse yesterday. Why? Well, Rex thought he wounded one of the outlaws yesterday. A head wound. I was with him when it happened. In our north pasture. I don't think I'll wait for your government man. He'll want to talk to both of us. I'm simply not home when he gets here. Don't go, Armand. Incidentally, my nocturnal habits are no concern of his. The important thing is I was home last night. Remember. Interesting? Yeah, the pot's boiling down there. Something going on under the lid. No, I haven't been the only one up here watching today. Big Chief White Star was up doing a little personal observing. He just left. You see ya? Got a feeling if he had, there'd been one of us dead. I gotta find White Star. It's about time we brought this to a head. Yeah. Uh, what do you want me to do? You get back into town. Start spreading this rumor. That $40,000 in cash is being taken from the uh, local bank to the bank in Paiute tomorrow morning. That's a pretty big rumor, isn't it? Yeah. Especially when it happens to be the truth.
Quite so. What are you doing here? Perhaps our eyes look for the same thing. I must speak to your brother. I'm going with you, Watson. I would rather you did not. You can't stop me. It is your right. My noble cousin, you've been walking with my sister. Does she still refuse to share your kingdom with you? Armand! I come on a matter of much greater importance. Ask your friend to leave. Well, stay here, Macy. He can hear anything you've got to tell me. I have seen much since yesterday morning. I did not sleep last night. I now go to tell our grandfather what I have seen. Great cousin. Sleepless cousin. Should I be concerned with what you've seen? Our grandfather will want to speak to you. Then you haven't yet told him of the strange sights you saw on your lonely vigil. I go to him now. What did White Star mean when he said that Grandfather wants to speak to you? I really don't know. I must have a tribal spanking coming to me. What have you done? You should have asked White Star to list the charges against me. You coming home? You having another rendezvous? Don't understand. Just don't understand you. Don't try. See you shot him? No. You never see anything, do you? We were just talking to White Star. He was on his way home. Armand didn't do it. I didn't say he did. Was there anyone else there with you when you talked to him? No. His good friend Macy wasn't with you? We haven't seen Macy all day. He was seen at your house about an hour ago. Maybe it's time you started telling me a few things. We'll start with uh, Tom Chandler's murder. He was killed about 2 o'clock this morning. What's that got to do with me? Your brother has quite a reputation with a bow and arrow. Armand was home in bed. How do you know he was at home in bed at 2 o'clock in the morning? Because I couldn't sleep last night. It was daylight before I went to bed. He was home. I told you the truth. 
Sometimes the truth is what a person wants to see. It's like a mirage. Leave me alone. Just leave me alone. As you say, Anne. There's a chance that some of us might not get back, so uh, if any of you want out, now's the time to speak up before we get started. Get on with it. Tomorrow morning, four of you and my partner, Karim, will be taking $40,000 in cash to Pyle. That's no secret. Everybody in town knows that money is going to pay you tomorrow. That was the idea. We deliberately spread the story so the whole town would know about it. It's 40 miles from here to Pio. If my figuring is right, a small band of outlaws will attack the men carrying the money in one of these, uh... I still say it's the Apaches and the whole mess of them will come down out of the hills. Well, by tomorrow night, we'll know which one of us is right. Are there any of us still alive? These uh, 10 spots that I've marked out on the map here are the 10 logical spots from which an ambush might take place. One of these will be hiding our gang of cutthroats. Now, what we're going to do is to ambush the ambushers. While the men with the money are riding this trail, the rest of us will be covering these different ambush points. The money party will have to be riding pretty slow for you to cover each ambush point ahead of them, won't they? That's right. Nice and slow. Make better targets for the Apaches that way. We could use some more men. The more men, the more chances we'll be taking that they'll find out about our plan. Now, the cover party will camp at Piper's Mountain. Come up one by one after dark. I'll leave it up to you, Chef, to uh, get the four men that are going to ride with Karam, huh? Sounds like a pretty good plan. If your theory about it being a small band is right. I stake my life on it. You're staking a lot more lives than your own, mister. I fit in. You better be around to see the money off in the morning. Look more natural that way. You can join us later. I guess I kind of got in the habit of wearing this thing. Where have you been since this afternoon? I've been half out of my mind worrying about you. I was discussing philosophy with my friend Macy. I'll make a literate man out of him yet. Just this once, I want you to tell me the truth. This afternoon when we left White Star, you went home. I followed him. I wanted to talk to him. He was murdered. And I saw who did it. The young chief is dead. Long live the old chief. Didn't you hear me? I saw who did it. It was Macy. Well, you're having hallucinations. I was with Macy all afternoon at his ranch. And I tell you, I saw him. You thought you saw him. Armand, I don't know what's happening to us. Maybe you're right. Maybe we should get away from here. Tonight. Right now. It's too late. But yesterday, you said that... No, it was too late then, too. I'm sorry. You'll go back to the city yourself, Anne. No. Together, Armand. We used to be so close. I've lost you. I don't know why. No, it's I who've lost you, Anne. That a white man. No. I hate him. Now, he's been with you ever since you met. <laughs> I see him with you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll even provide a handsome dowry for you. What is it, Armand? Sometimes when you laugh like that, you... You sound sick. My friend Macy is more blunt. He calls it crazy. I've got some business. Don't wait up for me. Don't go, Armand. 
Oh, you stay. Goodbye, sister. Men, even brothers. You saw me crying. No one's ever seen me cry before. I thought I asked you never to come here again. I had to. We've only got a few hours left to save a lot of lives. What do you want from me? Why was White Star killed? I don't know. Armand didn't do it. But he had somebody else do it for him, didn't he? That's what you were arguing about. No, it isn't. We don't have much time. You've got to help. By sacrificing Armand? If necessary, yes. Get out of here. I can't stand the sight of you. And you've got to understand, this is my job. I can't let all these people be killed if there's a possible chance of stopping it. If you decide that you've got anything you want to tell me, you can find me at Piper's Mountain. I'll be camping there till sunup. my brother, Macy. Expect he'll be here any minute. He had a little chore to do. Sit down. Have a drink? I'll have one myself. Turn around, Macy. Slowly. What's that for, Ann? You killed White Star. I'm going to kill you. Why would I kill White Star? You're out of your mind. I saw you. You might just as well tell the truth, because I'm going to kill you anyway. Now sit down. And I'm telling you, not asking you. If you ask about the Apache, I'll tell you. I killed him because your brother wanted him dead. Liar, murdering liar. And I'll tell you why he wanted him dead. Why Star been spying on us. He saw Brother Armin kill Chandler and a few other things. Who'd you hold yourself to be? You and that murdering brother of yours. Making yourself out to be something special. You're trash, girly, just like me. You're one of us, Anne, whether you like it or not. Let her alone, Macy. Any other time and I killed you. You know that, don't you, Macy? What are you doing here, Anne? She came gunning for me. She knows about White Star. She knows all of it. He told me you killed Tom Chandler. You knew that this morning, didn't you, Ann? Kept pushing it away from you, but you knew it was there. Just as you knew I sent Macy to kill White Star. I don't care what you've done. Let's get out of here. The bow don't pull out with $40,000 waiting to be picked up tomorrow. You're talking too much. The money they're taking to pie you tomorrow? They'll never know what hit them. They may be using that money to set a trap for you. Why did you say that? Rex told me they were going to get the outlaws tomorrow. Maybe she's right. What else did Rex tell you? 
They're making camp at Piper's Mountain tonight. Did you say why? How many men? No. This thing don't look so good now. Camp at Piper's Mountain means they're expecting a mountain ambush. We'll take them from the plains. You're not going. I'll tell them if you do. Do not oppose me, sister. Because I am your sister, I've blinded myself to what you do. But I'll not stand silent now. Tie her up, Macy. You're not satisfied to die alone, are you? You've got to take others with you. You sound so moral, so American. You must like this world of half red, half white. I do not. Tire! Hand me the rope. Thinking, LeBeau. We could be walking into a mess of lead. Stop thinking, Macy. You have the tools for that kind of work. Well, Mark Menon, you know it. Whether we ride tomorrow or not, we've had our day. And that's rapidly coming to a close. Let's go. The bank at St. Louis, and you'll find a considerable amount of money. It's in your name. If my plans work out tomorrow, You'll have a lot more. Not? You think they know what they're doing, Sheriff? Well, we could play along with Moffat on this bin. You keep your eyes open. Look after yourself. I'll do it. All right, let's go. worry about this one. Well, that's that. You got some fast riding to do, man. Come on.
wasting your time, tall tree. We won't be out of the mountains for an hour yet. The closer we come to it, the less I like it. The white man is afraid. <laughs> Our white master. Look at him. You're crazy, LeBeau. That's possible. Very possible. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. You stay, Macy. Only four more points. Now let's go, fella. Hey, Marvin! Marvin! I thought you would have seen him by now. No, not yet. Come on. spot in No sign of your outlaws yet. I guess the boys can ride on to Paiute in peace. It looks that way, yeah. Stop the men with the money. They're riding into an ambush. Where's the ambush? Yes, my brother's with them. A lot of us will die if you don't tell me. If I do, he'll die. I know. It's not going to be easy, yeah. I'm an Apache. We don't betray our own people to the white men. But you're betraying everybody this way, the Apaches and the white men, and yourself. Can't. All right, men. Let's do the best we can. Rex. I'll take you to him. Looks like your boy was wrong. That's right on. I feel sorry for you, Macy. You're doing this only for money. We put feeling into it. You're all Apache, ain't you? I would have made a great Apache chief. Wouldn't I have tall tree? Mm, good chief. You chief now. See? They come. still alive.
chief. We can do no worse than die. I'm sorry you have to be here, Ann. Let me talk to him. Well, there's no harm trying, I guess. Hold your fire, men! LeBeau! Can you hear me, LeBeau? I hear you! Go ahead, Ann. Armand, listen to me. It's Ann. She gave us away. Why? Did you bring them here, Ann? I'll come down there and talk to you. Answer my question. Did you betray me? Answer. Let me come to you. She brought him here, the double-crossing squaw. She brought them here. Here's your answer, Ann. Bend out that way. It's no use. They've got us trapped. I'm giving up. How long do you think you'll live if you give up? Whatever it is, I want it. I'm going, LeBeau. Up there, I'm coming out. All right, come on then. Farewell, Macy. Come. Show's over. I'm coming down. I'm coming with you. No way. But he's my brother. I'll go down first. I'll call you when I find out what's happened. There's just one more. LeBeau. Yeah, you got it. There he goes, up in the rocks. I'm going after him. Let's go. No, no, you stay here with Ann. Tell her I'll bring him in alive if I possibly can. He'll never give up. You're through. I'm taking you in. I want to take you alive anyway. You got a knife, white man? A way to fight, like an Apache.
Hey, stop shooting. It's happening. I'm going. kill him. I tried to keep him going over. I know. Let me help you. 